Let's keep the wolves in the hills and the women in our beds. Hey, is this heaven? No. It's Iowa. This Everclear is kicking my ass. <laughs> Hello, sexy monkeys. Welcome back to Sky Jam Experience. I'm about to cough. <coughs> yes. Ooh. Today is day 11 of 13 days. Why? Because this Friday is Friday the motherfucking 13th. So I'm having a marathon. I'm doing a movie review of all 12 Friday 13 movies. I'm doing some top 10 hotties, top 10 stoners, top 10 kills, top 10 actors that played Jason, and a, excuse me, and a bunch other top 10s. So I'm having a lot of fun with this because we're not having another Friday the 13th until January next year. So let's go all out on this, guys. Fucking soda. Just makes me want to burp. This movie came out in 2003, and the director, Ronnie Yu, from Hong Kong, Let's put it this way. He did not see a Friday 13 or a Nightmare on Elm Street movie going into this. So, right off the get, you're like, what are we doing? I understand you want a different angle from the outside, but come on. We get, we finally get Jason and Freddy on the fucking screen. And you do this to us. You don't, like, dude, this is something Wes Craven and Sean Cunningham should have co-directed together. Tom Savini should have been involved. Every head guy of both sides should have just came together and just had a great fucking movie but no we have been selfish and the people had to argue for their sides who wants to win who wants this who wants more screen time it's just god damn it guys come on i was born in 1990 so i was 13 years old with this so when this came out i remember just being just whoa let's go absolutely love this shit i was i always was curious like who won who won who won because i can't go to the movie theaters i was 13 sure you could go with someone else but back then it was just not gonna happen and so i had to wait for a little bit and of course we had no facebook none of this shit so all the reviews was in the newspapers but i didn't read that shit you know so it was just all word of mouth and uh, it was such a great time remembering this as a 13 year old so you're the one everyone's afraid of Tell me something. What kind of faggot runs around in a Christmas sweater? Okay, so mostly in this movie, I'm just going to talk about the Jason side. There's a lot of Freddy side, and I'll save that for when I do my Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, movie reviews, and all that good stuff. But I will say this. In this movie, what they did with Robert England and Freddy Krueger, they fucking hit a home run. I will say that. They, I think, did great on Freddy Krueger. Jason, on the other hand, I have no problem with the actor Ken that played Jason because one, it's not his fault. One, they, it should have been Kane Hodder. He got fucked over. But two, he's this guy Ken. He's a good actor. He's the tallest guy that ever played Jason. But I did not like the way his mask looked, his whole outfit, and his makeup. I feel like he was some dude from some horror convention. I love horror conventions. People do look good at horror conventions, but. You can just tell it wasn't. It was. It went. It went from an A to a B in like costume, in my opinion. It's just you can just tell it was off. Betsy Palmer that played uh, Mrs. Voorhees, Jason's mom in one and two, she was offered to replay to reprise her role for the hundred and fiftieth thousand time, but she declined for the hundred and fiftieth thousand time because money, money, money. But come on, like Betsy. I know you're passed away. I know you're long gone, but it would have been nice to have her in this movie as if some random old lady playing Jace's mom. It would have been really nice. It's sworn to secrecy, yeah. you know, by New Line Cinema here, but uh, I'll, I'll say my one, this is my pat thing. Freddie takes a licking, but he keeps on clicking. <laughs> All right. He, he, he holds up, let me tell you. He takes a good beating, but, uh, but so does Jason. So, yeah. you know, you just have to wait and see where those end. It's just crazy how in the 11th movie of Friday the 13th, we now have this saying of Jason being feared by the water. I know the writers, they had they didn't put that in there. That was all about rewrites. But the main writers, they put something in there about like conscious of drowning. That I understand. But this whole Jason being afraid of water, I, I get it though because Freddy, fire, Jason, water. I see where you're going with this. But why is Jason afraid of the water? 
I know he drowned in the water, but in several movies, he has no problem swimming to kill someone in the water. You do get the Friday the 13th vibe in this movie right off the get. For example, they show the girl and her tits automatically skinny dipping, pretty much. Camping. That's Friday the 13th within a three-second nutshell. The whole story of this, I'm like 70% cool with it. But like when they show this whole like the Western Hills the Asylum, the psych ward, I wish all that was gone. But I'm cool with the hypnosil because on a Nightmare on Elm Street four or three it was three yeah the third third movie when heather lennon camp comes back she talks about hypnocell so that was good i like that poll but this whole mental asylum western hills i think all that could have been just taken out i did not know this till i watched this movie but evan lagoya she is actually an extra in this movie she's in the hallway when um i'll just show you the clip are they seeing that because that's when he comes for you. In your dreams. You're lucky to... It's really funny. There's a lot of, like, ideas of... Like, before this movie was put out there, because it was really in development hell. There's, I think, $6 million worth of just writers just writing, writing, coming up with ideas. And there's so many ideas of... One, like, where Freddy Krueger, as a human being, was working at the camp when Jason drowned. There's a... Like, he actually killed Jason. There was one where Freddy Cougar had sex with Mrs. Voorhees and is actually Jason's father. Just a bunch of crazy... There's actually... If you YouTube it, you could probably find a shit ton more out there. It's actually really funny. Um, but I like the way they're going with this. You know, like, they're going to Elm Street. They use Jason to kill, to get Freddy back up, and then they bring Freddy back in and one-on-one. I see where they're going with this, but I think it was just the director. We didn't we, wrong style, wrong director. Overall, I give it a six out of ten. Six out of ten is something that is very enjoyable throughout the movie. You got good one liners. It was it looked good on camera. I give it that much, but I mean, the fact that you have Freddie and Jason together that really is the main thing. It really is because. This thing really could have been polished up a lot better. And they had so much time to, to you know, make this movie. It's such that this is what they come out with. Six out of ten for me, guys. All right, Sexy Monkeys. I move on to the very last one. The remake. Something that I actually really, really, really enjoy a lot. I cannot wait to tell you all about it. So hop on over to the next video, Sexy Monkeys. Until then, remember, if you go to jail, don't drop the soap.